in the class. So, try and sit down. Hello, we're beginning the class. So, just uh, to review what we talked about in the last class, we started talking about return. So, we finished talking about calculating the cost of capital, cost of money, and we talked about calculating the return, the income we're going to get in, which is basically our revenues minus our expenses is going to be our income. So if we calculate our return, we're able to make an investment decision. Is our income higher than our cost of money? Then we should invest. <clears throat> we said that we should use cash flows, we should use cash to measure our income rather than accounting earnings. We should use incremental cash flows. Uh, that is, and we'll talk more about it later, but we don't include administrative expenses or sub costs or pre-project costs. And we use time-weighted returns. So we, we use our time value of money, okay? Cash flows that occur earlier are more valuable than cash flows which occur later. So we have to use our net present value to put the cash flow from the future value to the present value. Okay, so we talked about uh, different types of projects. We're, we are looking at uh, Rio Disney currently. Uh, the project Disney is making in Brazil. So to make a new theme park. So the last class we talked about uh, the numbers and this is the accounting earnings of the project looking at the accountant's way. We look at the revenue, then we look at the expenses and then we look at other expenses where in accounting earnings depreciation is counted as operating expenses. Okay, so it comes in every year, minus depreciation. Is depreciation a cash flow or not a cash flow? Do, do you understand depreciation? Yeah. Yes. Is that a cash flow or not a cash flow? Not cash. It's not a cash flow, right? So we end up with our operating income for each year. So <coughs> overall we said that we are going to get a return on capital of 4% with our accounting earnings. So we have to co we said that we're going to make a return on capital on this investment of 4%. So to make a judgment about whether this is a good return or a bad return, we need to compare this to a hurdle rate. Which of the following is the right hurdle rate? Why or why not? So discuss with your partner. The risk-free rate, let's say it was 2009, it was 3.5%. The cost of equity for Disney as a company, we calculated it was 8.9%. The cost of equity for Disney theme parks, 8.2%. The cost of capital for Disney as a company, or the cost of capital for Disney theme parks, or none of the above. So discuss with your partner. We figured out that we are going to make a profit of about 4% a year, okay? So what should we compare this to when we're deciding to make the investment or not? Which, which hurdle rate are we going to use? So discuss with your partner. Take one and pass around. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so let's have a hands up to see. Hands up who is going to say this one. Okay, hands up who is going to say this one. Hands up who is going to say here. Hands up who says this one. Hands up who says this one. So we can see most hands for Disney as a company and Disney as a theme park. Okay, so. Uh, so, we are going to use the cost of capital because equity investor, equity is just when we're talking about the equity investors, okay? But here we're thinking about the company. So most people were right, they chose the cost of capital, okay? Equity, cost of equity is just for stockholder or equity investor, right? But thinking about the company, we use cost of capital, including equity and debt. So uh, <coughs> we are going to have the cost of capital for Disney theme parks. Okay? We already discussed before in the class about the project for the movie. Right? So we have to make for each department we have our own specific cost of capital or cost of equity. Okay? So Disney Teams Park is less risky than Disney Company. So we have to take that into account when we're uh, deciding whether to invest in the project or not. Right? It's a little bit like looking at this as a separate company. Theme Park for Disney is a separate business than the toy business or the movie business. Very different business, okay? So when we're deciding to make an investment here, we have to use the correct risk for this area, for this business. And the correct risk in this business is less risky than the other businesses. Okay? Do you have any question about this? So should we take this project or not? We're going to make a profit of 4% a year and it costs us 6.6% .6 to get the money. Should we take this project or not take this project? We're going to make a profit of 4%. Our, it costs us 6.6% .6 to get the money. Are you going to take the project? No, right? You're going to lose 2.6% every year. Okay? It costs you 6.6% .6 to get money. Okay, if you imagine that this was just a loan, if we had 100% debt, you get a loan of 6% and you make a profit of 4%. Are you going to do that? The bank gives you a loan for 6% and you make a profit of 4%? No. No, right? So this is what the hurdle rate is telling us. Should we decide to make a project or not? Do the project or not? So something else we need to think about <coughs> is uh, this project is in Brazil. So should we have a risk premium for foreign projects? Okay. So the first risk is exchange rate risk. This should be diversifiable. So we already looked at we can diversify the exchange rate risk. For example, we have projects in a number of countries. So we can get some imports from Brazil as well as revenues from Brazil. The investors in our company are already globally diversified. They invested in a lot of different <coughs> countries. So they already have that kind of diversification. So for Disney, this kind of risk should not affect the cost of capital. Okay? So uh, exchange rate risk, we can also use a forward contract to make this uh, lower. Okay, we could make some of the same arguments about political risk. Like, the investors in the company are globally diversified. 
they invested in different countries. Okay? But there are some aspects of political risk in emerging markets which are difficult to diversify and may affect the cash flow. So <coughs> this is a risk we are going to bring into the cost of capital when it invests in Brazil or other emerging markets. So uh, we talked about it before how to calculate this kind of uh, risk premium. Okay. So we said that the cost of capital in the last slide was 6.6% for Disney in the theme park business. Okay. But the, this cost may not reflect the additional risk associated with Disney being in an emerging market like Brazil. So uh, we are going to add in the country risk premium for Brazil. So we should know how to do this. We we saw for the midterm exam, right? Uh, we have here we have the standard deviation in the equity market over the standard deviation in the debt market. Okay, and here we have the default spread for Brazil, Brazilian bonds. Okay, so we multiply them together and we get uh, three point nine five percent. So <coughs> then we. Uh, find the cost of equity, again, more accurately. Cost of equity, the risk-free rate plus beta times the risk premium. So we updated our risk premium because it's in Brazil. We found this cost of equity. Okay. So this is just a reminder of how we uh, find the country risk premium for Brazil. Multiply the default spread for Brazil by the volatility of their equity index over government bonds. So this is this number is for bonds, default spread for bonds. So we do this part to change it to equity. So uh, using this estimate of the cost of uh, equity, we can update our uh, cost of capital. Okay, so it's going to be 8.62% not 6.62%. So we added in additional uh, risk in Brazil. So for example, in Brazil, uh, before the World Cup, they had some protests against the World Cup. Do you understand protest? Yeah. Demonstrations, right? So uh, the Brazilian stock market fell down, right? The, the people were out demonstrating on the streets and businesses were closed. Okay, and they had some kind of problems. So we can have this kind of issue. So we put in some extra risk here, based on their country risk. So this will lead us to conclude that do not invest in the park. The return on capital is lower than the cost of capital. So the project should not be taken. Okay. So discuss this question with your partner. Given that we computed the average over a period of 10 years, while the theme park is going to have a life greater than 10 years, would you feel comfortable with this conclusion? Yes or no? So we made this all this calculation for Disney over the 10 year time period, right? We can see here year one to year 10. Okay, we looked at our operating income on each year. We looked at our uh, money we spent, and we figured out our return on capital. So the question is, uh, this was 10 year. We made the calculation for 10 years. And as you can notice, near the end of the 10 years, the, the operating income kept going up, right? So. How long does a theme park last for? How long has Lotte World been there for? Or Everland? How many years? I don't know, can you tell me? When did Everland start? Ten years ago? When? Twenty or thirty years ago? Okay, so then discuss this uh, question with your partner. 
We made these calculations for 10 years, but the theme park will last for more than 10 years. So do you feel comfortable with this conclusion we made to not invest in the park? Because of that reason. Have a show of hands. Who says uh, they do feel comfortable? It's oh yes, this is okay. Okay, who says they don't feel comfortable? So everybody has to put up your hand. Okay, do you think it's okay just to use ten years or not? So hands up. Yes, it's okay just to use ten years. Hands up. No, it's not okay just to use ten years. I, we want to take in more accounts, right? I don't feel comfortable. Okay. So, usually in finance, we calculate things on a kind of 10-year basis because it's hard to know the future after 10 years for a lot of businesses or companies, right? Some companies, even five years, it's hard to tell the future. So they want to make, show that they can make a profit in five years or in 10 years, right? But in this case, we're talking about a theme park. So the theme park will last maybe 30, 40, 50 years, right? So I think in this case, we would not feel comfortable about this uh, conclusion, right? We will still be making uh, money after uh, the 10 years, so we may want to take that into account in some way, okay? So let's just uh, stop here for a second. I think everybody has the page by now, right? So let's look at the page. So, uh, this is uh, calculating cost of capital for your company. So we just finished in the last class. Okay, so this is like a review. It's your second assignment. Okay, so let's go through each point. So, <laughs> calculate the cost of capital for your firm. So you choose a firm. So the best thing to do is to choose a firm, easiest thing for you to do is to choose a firm on Yahoo Finance, okay? Firm listed in the US. Uh, try to find, you should find a company, it has at least two businesses. Okay? Do you understand at least two businesses? <coughs> How many businesses does Disney have? Four, right? Disney has four different businesses, so I want you to find a company with at least two different businesses. If you find one with just one business, it's too, it's too simple. Okay? So we want you to find a company with our, which has two different businesses. Disney has movies, toys, theme park, something else, right? So diversified company. So all of these calculations we already did in class or as homework, the last time we looked at some homework exercises, right? So you need to put them together to get the cost of capital. So this is a reminder of how to do the calculations again. So the first, number one, to find your risk-free rate on the cost of equity and the cost of debt. Both of them we need our risk-free rate. So we go to Bloomberg and we get the 10-year rate for the US government bond, okay? If you're doing your calculation for another company in Europe, what would you use instead of US dollars? What would you find instead? If you were analyzing a Japanese company or a European company, what would you do? Where would you go instead? Not the US government 10-year bond, what would you find? German government for Europe, and what about for Japan? 
Japanese government, right? But we assume you'll be doing in US dollars if you choose a company in the US, okay? Number two, risk premium. So you need to decide, are you going to use the implied premium or the historical premium? Okay, we can find the historical premium or the implied premium easily by going to these links. Okay, so uh, if you click on this link, this is on the uh, this document is on the website, right? If you click on this link, you can find the implied premium for 2014, okay, or historical premium. Then we may need to get a risk premium for another country. Why? Because just like with Disney, our company probably gets some revenues from another country, okay? So when we're calculating the cost of equity, we have to look at that also. So we may need to find a premium for other countries. So we already looked at the PPT, at the country risk premiums. So you can try, you can calculate your own country risk premium, or you can find the slide on the PPT, which listed all the country risk premiums, okay? There's also a link here where we can find a country risk premium. Often if you look at Yahoo Finance, you'll find for your company, it doesn't say the country. What it says is Western Europe, Eastern Europe, South America, right? So this link has the risk premiums for Western Europe, for South America, right? So Asia, okay? It's going to be slightly higher than the US. All it is is the average of the Asian countries. So again, you can check this link for that. Then the next point, you need to make a weighted risk premium based on where your company gets its revenues. So if you look at a company like uh, Disney, they don't get all their revenues from the US, right? They get some revenues from Asia, from South America, from Europe. So we have to make this calculation, a weighted, a weighted risk premium, okay? I get 20% from, from uh, Asia, right? I get 30% from Europe. I get 50% from the US, okay? Then Asia is 5, Europe is 6, US is 5, or sorry, Asia is 7, right? So we multiply 20 by 7, 30 by 6, 50 by 5, add together, okay? That's the weighted average. So, <coughs> Then we are going to use the bottom-up beta. It would be easy if we went to Yahoo Finance and found the regression beta. Okay, we just have to go to Yahoo Finance and check the beta. If you want, you can write the regression beta, but we said the bottom-up beta can be more accurate. So we are going to calculate the bottom-up beta for the company. So the first step is to find a breakdown of the business your firm is in. Okay. You can get this, we looked at it in the last class, we look at it again now, the 10K document in Yahoo Finance. So, if we go to Yahoo Finance, if we click on Disney, so you can write in, you write in, find a company here on Yahoo Finance, right, listed in the US stock market. You can go to the S&P 500, <coughs> choose a company if you want. Okay, so we said to get here, we go to SEC filings. Can you see SEC filings here? SEC filings is on the left-hand side of the page. Click on SEC filings, and we choose, it's written here, the 10K document, the annual report. 10K. Click on the 10K. And then most of this information is in notes to consolidated financial statements. Notes to consolidated financial statements. Here. We click on this. Okay. And then we get the de details. Okay. So first of all, we can see for Disney, it's going to tell us our different uh, information. Here we can see the businesses. Media networks, cable networks, broadcasting, parks and resorts. Okay, so you have to explain the businesses here at the start, right? Description of businesses, media networks, number one, number two, parks and resorts, 
Okay, number three, studio entertainment. Number four, consumer products. So now we know Disney's businesses. Okay. Next, we need to find their revenue in each businesses. Okay. Here we can see revenues. Okay. So if you don't find a word, you can click in Control and F and look for revenues. Go through this document. Find a revenue for each business. Okay. So. Do you have any questions so far? So then turn to the next page. Yes? It's group work. The same group as you had before. If you want, you can change the partner, you can talk to me and change the group. Otherwise, it's the same group that you had before. It's a group assignment. Okay? Uh, so step two, estimate bottom-up betas for each business. Okay, you found that Disney has four businesses. You need to find the bottom-up betas. So what we do is we go to the group of industries. Go to this link. This link will tell us industry and the unlevered beta for that industry. Okay? So this is a grouping of industries. Look at the note. It may not be completely accurate. For example, we are we choose a chocolate company. Do you know Hershey's? Yes. Yeah. We choose Hershey's, right? This will be in, you have to choose which category of industry is it in. Retail food. Okay? Chocolate will be in the retail food. You can ask me if you're not sure about which industry is the business in. Okay? But just there's a note here. This is uh, we're just using for this class. But if you graduate and we use the Bloomberg service, they are going to give you betas for chocolate companies, very specifically. Okay? In this class, we just have split into 80 industries or 90 industries, right? But in the real life, you can find more specifically what is the average beta for chocolate companies. Okay? Then uh, step three, we need to compute the value of each business that your company is in. So weigh the businesses based on revenues. So we find out the revenue of each business. That's why I want you to have more than one business. If you just have one business, you don't have to do all these things, right? You won't be doing this part. So if you find one with too many businesses, it's going to be too hard. So try and find a company with just two businesses or three businesses, okay? So we just uh, we can use the enterprise value to sales equation we looked at in the class to find out the value of each business. Okay, not just using the revenues, finding out the value of each business. Okay, Use, we can have, this link can help us to find the enterprise value to sales per industry. Then step four, uh, we take the bottom up unlevered beta for our company by taking a weighted average of the betas in step two and step three. So just like this we did for Asia, for Europe, we're going to get the weighted average of the business this time. Okay? So our business is 20% par parks. Okay? 30% media. Okay? 50% toys. Okay? We just get the weighted average. Okay? For what is the beta for this industry, this industry, this industry? What is the value, of estimated value for our company in a percentage? Okay? And then we find the average. This is going to be our unlevered beta. Okay? Then we need to change our unlevered beta into the levered beta by adding on our debt. So for that we need to find our debt to equity ratio. We can find on Yahoo Finance. Okay? And then we uh, use the equation to change from unlevered to levered beta. Do you have any questions about calculating cost of equity? This part? Then the next one is cost of debt. It's a little bit shorter. Cost of debt, we find a rating for our company. There should be a rating for our company. Okay? We can either Google our company. For example, if I Google Disney and credit rating, I can find quite quickly, right? So credit rating, Disney. So first hit is Moody's. 
Moody's is a credit rating company, okay? So often we have to log in, register, but it's asking me to register, right? But I can close this window and I can still see Disney's rating here, right? It says here, Disney's rating, A2. Moody's rating is A2, okay? Prime. So we can just Google to find the rating of our company, okay? Here we can see again, Moody's assigns A2 rating to the Walt Disney Company, okay? Or else we can use some other link I put on there. Uh, <coughs> then we use the table from our PPT to find the default spread. If it's A2, how much is the default spread from the US government bond, okay? Do you understand default spread? Yeah. Disney's is more risky than the US government bond. How much is the percent more risky for A2 rating? Okay? We have a table that you can check. Okay? Uh, we have a link. Okay? Uh, if you like, uh, then we, we use this to find risk free rate plus default spread equals cost of debt. Okay? Or if you like, if you can't find the rating, you can make, you should be able to find the credit rating. If not, you can try to calculate the synthetic cost of debt. Okay, and then we calculate the after tax cost of debt minus the tax. Any questions about the cost of debt? Okay, then the last part is the cost of capital, putting them together. So we find the market value. We are going to, we said that the market <coughs> value is more uh, conservative, so we're going to use that. So we find the market value of equity on Yahoo Finance under the key statistics, <coughs> market capitalization. Okay, so we go back to Yahoo Finance. And just under key statistics, the first thing we can see is. Uh, market capitalization here, which is basically number of shares by uh, <coughs> multiplied by the market price, okay? So if we go here, we click on key statistics, we'll see here market capitalization, okay? This is 188 billion for Disney. That basically means a lot of people bought stocks in Disney, Right, they paid how much is the stock price for Disney? Okay, let's say it's forty dollars. Then there's that many shares. So this is going to be. Now somebody asked me in the last class, why don't we? Why do we use the book, the market value instead of the book value? Right? Just basically, the market value of equity is usually higher than the book value of equity. Okay. If we check the book value of equity for, for Disney in their balance sheet, it's going to be lower. Okay, so market value is day-to-day uh, -day, uh, price, right, day-to-day -day value. So we use this one. So <clears throat> then we find the market value of debt. So I think this is the most challenging part is to find the market value of debt. In fact, I have added an extra page to help you exactly to find the market value of debt. Okay, on the website. Uh, there is also, there is this document, but there is also a document to help you to calculate the market value of debt. So we need to go into the 10K document again. We have the 10K document that we looked at already, this one here. Notes of consolidated uh, financial statement, and we find all the interest bearing, interest bearing debt and leases. Okay, and then we have to make the present value equation. It explains how to do that in the Microsoft Word document. Okay, we already talked about it in the class. And then we use this market value of debt and market value of equity to find the debt to equity ratio. Okay and we uh, find our cost of capital. This is the equation for cost of capital. Okay, so do you have any question about this uh, assignment? 
So, uh, just we can discuss about this assignment with our. Uh, I'll give you some time on Friday. Okay, so we can bring this also on Friday. So on Friday you can uh, sit next to the other students in your group. You can remember. Now we just have. Left, so if people are getting up and changing their place, it's not worth it. So just Friday we will uh, give you 10 minutes to discuss about your uh, project. Okay, you can read it before Friday. So do you have, nobody has any question about the assignment? Okay, so then let's uh, continue to uh, discuss about our returns. Okay, so, so the key to value is earning excess returns. Excess means more than. We need to earn more returns than our hurdle rate. Okay, so what we looked at here was uh, the return on capital minus the cost of capital. Okay? So economic value added is using this. Return on capital minus cap cost of capital multiplied by the amount of money we invested. This is called economic value added. So uh, for Disney, uh, we can have return on capital minus cost of capital here. Then we find our book value of capital and we get our uh, economic value added. <coughs> so this is basically using the accounting earnings. But what we're saying is that we should be aware of this using accounting earnings. But Using the cash flow is better than using the accounting earnings. Okay, so we are going to change this calculation, which we did using the accounting earnings, to a calculation with cash flows, and we are going to see if the answer will be the same. Should we invest in the project or not? Okay. So what we need, what we can do is we have our accounting earnings. We already made our accounting earnings here with an income statement for each year. So what we can simply do is try to change this into a cash flow. So to get from income to cash flow, we add back all the non-cash charges. We said depreciation is non-cash, okay? And we also have to subtract out the change in the non-cash working capital and the capital expenditures. So we can see here that we start off with operating income, then we have taxes, operating income after taxes, Now we're going to add back in depreciation because in the accounting statement we uh, deducted depreciation here. Here was depreciation, right? This was minus, 788 minus 425, okay? So that our profit looked less and we paid less tax. We deducted depreciation here. But was that a cash number? No, this wasn't actual cash. This was just using accounting, okay? So this was the cash. So we need to add back in. Here we deducted this number to get our income. Here is our operating income and operating income after taxes. Year one, minus 31. So if we go down here, we can see that year one, operating income after taxes, minus 31. But we're going to add it back in, depreciation. Here was 50, here 425, okay? We are going to subtract uh, capital expenditures. Capital expenditures is, we spent a lot of money at the start, 
Right, we invested 2.5 billion here, 1 billion here, at the start of the project. Was this in our accounting earnings? <coughs> no, it wasn't, right? This was our accounting earnings. Zero. In zero, right? We didn't put in, in accounting earnings, we didn't put in minus 2.5 billion in year zero. Instead, we spread it out over all the years by depreciation, okay? So we have to add that back in. So it means that we had minus, the first year in cash, we had minus 2.5 billion. The second year, we had minus 1 billion, okay? Change in working capital is not as big, it's not as important. But the park wasn't started here, it wasn't started here. It starts up here in year two. So working capital, we said, was uh, non-cash working capital is the kind of thing like stock. We're not using the stock, okay? So we end up with our cash flow. Under accounting earnings, year zero was zero. But under cash, year zero is minus 2.5 billion because we spent 2.5 billion. Does that make sense? <coughs> so what we're doing is changing our accounting earning to what's happening in cash. So we get a different number at the end for each year, a cash number. As you can see, we're going to have a higher negative number in the first years, and then a better positive number in the later years. So discuss this question with your partner. Does depreciation have a positive or a negative effect on cash flows? Does depreciation have a positive or a negative effect on cash flows? So what happens to the cash flow when we think about depreciation compared to accounting earnings? Discuss with your partner. from depreciation, okay? It, de it can reduce the taxable income and taxes, but depreciation doesn't affect the tax flow. Depreciation is just an accounting idea, right? We, you already said that depreciation is not cash flow, okay? But it does have some effect on the cash flow in that it uh, reduces the taxable income. We get some tax benefit from depreciation every year. Okay? So every year we deduct at the start we have or sorry, at the start we have a loss. Okay? So we don't want to deduct much depreciation. We want to deduct depreciation at the end when we have a profit. Okay? So if we didn't have depreciation, we wouldn't get any tax benefit. Okay? Because we pay, take away depreciation, right, then we pay tax on the income after depreciation. So we can get some tax benefit from depreciation. So this can have some positive effect on the cash flow, especially in the later years. So let's uh, discuss about this more in the next class. Okay, let's finish there for today. <laughs>